Last time, my cycle touring mate Jawe and I sadly parted ways. We'd enjoyed three weeks riding the Route 66 together, but Amarillo marked an obvious point for us to split and once more pursue our own missions. Him north towards Chicago, and me south to Dallas. I'm riding on a one-man wheel car, cause I'm doing analog 36 inch in the cycle across the USA. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna get myself into, into, yeah. My name's Ed, and I'm riding a unicycle around the world. Join me on this series as I attempt to cycle 4,000 miles across the United States of America. What do you reckon? It was an odd feeling riding alone again, almost as if I'd forgotten something. But soon I got back into the swing of solo cycle touring and started making decent progress towards Dallas. While riding along Highway 287, I met Eric. He offered me some bananas. I know three, three is kind of weighted, but yeah. if you can down it, it's all good. Eric was currently driving around the country, sleeping in his van and making videos about his travels. While heading north through Texas, he happened to spot me on the opposite side of the road, so turned around to say hi. Somebody's on a unicycle bike tour. Oh my gosh, I have to stop. A 36er, I don't even know how to ride a unicycle. Like I would, gosh, I didn't even know this was possible. I learned that Eric had also done a healthy amount of cycle touring himself. Uh, Florida to California, I've done that. I've done up the East Coast on my bike. And then I did Japan last year. Well, what's your YouTube channel, Eric? I do do some bike touring content. The College Picker. The College Picker YouTube channel. I just put out seven, almost eight hours of a mega vlog cycling through Japan. 50 days, 5-0 in Japan, daily vlogging. It's crazy. It's the best Japan content. All on YouTube. All right. <laughs> I got the plug, dude. I've talked about nice. it so many times. <laughs> Before heading off, he wanted to share with me one last thing. So I have the complete shit vlogging camera, the Canon 110HS. This is circa 2011, I think, when everyone would use this. I silicone magnets to it in order to give it like a superpower. And the superpower is... You can get interesting shots. Cheers for the bananas, Eric, and best of luck with your journey. I'd seen that a storm was scheduled to hit that night, so as the sun set, my focus shifted to finding somewhere protected to pitch my tent. Struggling to find anywhere that wasn't privately owned, in the end I settled for a patch of ground that was absolutely less than ideal. Alright, this could be a mistake, but I'm going to camp here. It's going to rain in about three hours, and I think it's going to be pretty hard. I'm hoping this ground is porous enough that it's not going to get slicked up and turn into mud, but we'll, we'll see. Oh no! Oh, 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 oh no! Look at this! Look at ah! Oh. Ah! I'm half naked in a bug. Why does I camp here? Oh, I thought it'd be all right, but it certainly isn't. Oh my god! Just check that out. I managed to extract all my stuff from uh, from that puddle. <laughs> I was having a really nice dream as well, and I wake up and I'm like, oh, there's, there's water everywhere. Um, that's never happened before. I've usually been pretty good about finding good places to camp, but I totally failed last night. Uh, I'm on my way to a place called Wichita Falls now. I'm gonna stay at a cheap motel tonight. Gonna get stuff dry, gonna try and wash some things. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm keen for a rest day and a day of just drying stuff because that sleeping bag got soaking. <laughs> I've never woken up in a puddle before. I don't recommend it. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Right, boot. Boots, they're drying. Bag. Coat. Over there we've got tent. That's drying. Unicycle, took that in the shower earlier. It's now washed. Uh, tent, another bit of tent, disgusting bath. It's nice to be dry again. That was a disgusting morning. I've never woken up in a puddle before, and I really don't want to repeat it. But I say, hey, how long's it gonna rain for? 
Tomorrow's probably gonna bring sunshine. Super! Everything's washed, everything's dry. Let's get on the road. For the next few days, I made the most of the dry weather to focus on cranking out the final 150 miles to Dallas. Keep on walking. Keep on keeping on. Keep on thinking about my bed I'm gonna sleep on. Through the rain. Hey, we're coming into the outskirts of Dallas now. Um, I've still got 35 miles to ride. I've done 30 today. So it's gonna be, if you can do some maths, that's a 65 mile day, provided I make it to Mark's. Mark, who was part of Dallas's unicycle community, had reached out a few months prior, kindly offering me a bed at his home. Any day over 50 miles was pretty big for me. In addition to the distance, navigating Dallas's city streets at night was particularly shattering, but the desire for a soft bed and warm shower was strong, and I arrived just before midnight. Thank you, Mark, for staying up. To celebrate the drop of Ed Unicycles the USA, I've released a new clothing design. These t-shirts are available in a selection of different colours, and this hoodie will keep you warm while out riding. Also, consider drinking your morning coffee from a mug with my cartoon face on it. Check out all this stuff through the Teespring link in the description. Now back to the episode. The next day was an admin kind of day. I set myself up in Mark's kitchen to import the week's video footage, clear my camera's SD cards, and check a few emails. And oh my, did I get a shock when I saw what was waiting for me in my inbox. It was a message from a guy called Brad Armstrong, and the email subject seemed innocuous enough. Please visit. But it was the photos that really caught my attention. Specifically the first one. A photo of a cheque made out to school in a bag for $100,000. Now, if you didn't already know, School in a Bag is a charity I'd been supporting during my World Unicycle Tour. Here's the founder, Luke, to tell you a little bit about what they do. So my name's Luke Simon and I'm the founder and CEO of School in a Bag. And School in a Bag is an initiative that delivers rucksacks filled with stationary learning resources and eating utensils. And we send them out to very poor, orphan, vulnerable and disaster affected children around the world. So in a typical school bag, once I've got the zip open, we've got all the essential things that you need uh, to learn with. So we've got six exercise books, three square, three plain and three lines so that children can write and draw and do maths and do spellings. Then we've got very basic stationary items, a pencil case with biros, and we've got a math set that contains the all important sharpener, a pack of crayons, a ruler, very important for margins, and then something that we take for granted all the time, a pack of pencils. There's 12 pencils in here, which is, which is huge for them. And then of course we've got the eating utensils and these just allow children around the world to, to take food to school and to eat. And we know that in Nepal, once we put tiffin boxes into the, into the school bags, the children didn't go home for lunch, they stayed at school. And therefore they stayed in school for the whole afternoon. And then finally, a water bottle. Hugely important, particularly in our African countries where children walk long distances to get home where it's very hot. We're doing quite well, but there's about 262 million children that don't go to school every day, so we've got a lot of work to do and we've got to keep fundraising to fund more bags. Brad's email asked if I'd come to his lakeside home in Tyler, Texas to meet him and collect the donation. I decided to give him a call to work out if his offer was genuine. Hello. Hi. Brad. Hi, Brad. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. Yeah. I uh, just got your email. That's, that's a bit of a mad one to receive, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. Uh, you know, all the pictures come through. Yeah. I love the I love the, the uh, recumbent bike you got there. That's cool. I really like that thing too. Uh, I painted those wheels. Uh, year or two ago, I put the electric motor on it, so uh, I like it. So I did want to invite you to come by if, if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're... Yeah, I was just looking at the the map. Um, yeah, it's it, it makes sense. I, I can yeah, I can I can be in Tyler in 
it's three days, I guess. Like I can get there on Sunday if that works with you. Very cool, yeah. But wow, yeah. I mean, hundred thousand dollars to to school in a bag. I need to uh, I need to tell them. That's uh, that's quite incredible. Very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. All right. Bye. Bye. Cheers. So I guess I was unicycling to Tyler, Texas. But not before first exploring the Dallas area with Mark's friends Paul and Plum, who, bizarrely, happen to own a pig called Dudley. Oh yeah, he plays a piano too. Well, kinda. Dudley. Play your piano. Play your piano. Okay, good boy. We first visited Fort Worth's Modern Art Museum. There, we saw some of Ron Muick's pretty incredible lifelike sculptures. I mean, just look at that foot. Outside the museum was an iron structure that produced some pretty entertaining echoes. Well, we were entertained anyway. Then, it was onto Fort Worth's Water Gardens. Which, if you've ever watched it, is where they filmed one scene from the sci-fi movie, Logan's Run. The next morning, I was keen to get back on the road and make progress towards Brad's home in Tyler. It was just over 100 miles away, so I aimed to split the distance over two days. Poole, who was also a unicyclist, decided to join me for the ride out of Dallas. While rolling along, I asked him what kind of reaction he usually gets to unicycling here. Uh, I get lots of, that's amazing. Um, wow, respect. That's pretty common. And I did actually have one little kid um, tell me he hopes I fall and break my head. Lovely. I just want to take a minute to thank everyone that's currently supporting me on Patreon, especially Adam Fink, Adam Stevens, Alex Brito, Alex Lee, Annabelle Miley, Anson Liang, Axel Fontaine, IP, Carrie Cleland, Damon Walker, Dakota Morehouse, Derek Donovan, Daniel Thorpe, Elijah Legenda, Gaia de Navaya, Jeff and Kelly Elder, James Little, Jessison, Kelly Jackson, <gasps> need to breathe, <sighs> uh, Kintaro Sakino, uh, the Madston Brothers, Malvin Zen, uh, Mario Yegas, Mark Paris, who else we got? Mike, uh, Mike Foxwell, Sam Richardson, Stephen Jones, Neil Brooks, Thin Seller, Tori, Tommy, Nurmas Javi, Sophie Vum, Tyson and Bethany Hodge, and Warren Snyder. Thank you very much for supporting what I do. All right, now back to the video. After 55 miles, we finished the day at a gas station. I could tell that Paul was pretty relieved. There were some trying times. Because <laughs> that was the biggest day that you've done. Uh, yeah, ago. I've never, I've ridden 30 before. So that's, yeah. yeah. You did pretty well. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I'm camping out now in Elmo, around the back of the gas station. I asked a camper and they said, yeah, uh, I'm knackered. <laughs> so I'm going to crawl into my tent and have a sleep. I'll do it all again tomorrow. After a restful night behind the gas station, I excitedly packed up, and with just 50 miles left until Brad's home in Tyler, I was enthused to finally meet the man planning to hand me a check for $100,000. I'm just keen to have a little chat with him and, and kind of ask him a few questions about that, because it's... I'm, I'm still stunned by it. Now, I'm not going to lie, there was a part of me that questioned whether or not Brad's offer was genuine. A wealthy Texan man luring a young traveller to his lakeside home with the promise of riches could feasibly be the plot to some cheesy low-budget horror movie. One where the protagonist gets brutally murdered, perhaps drowned in the lake tied by his feet to his own unicycle. So you can't blame me for being a tad sceptical. But I understood the tremendous amount of good that $100,000 could do for the education of thousands of children. So I stifled my concerns and pedaled off towards Lake Tyler to meet Brad Armstrong. And just kept telling myself that whatever happened next, this encounter would make for one remarkable story. 
A story that, regrettably for those of you having to wait a whole week, will continue next time. If you're feeling impatient and can't wait for next week's video, you're in luck, because the next episode is available right now on my Patreon. And if you're feeling really impatient, you can head over to Vimeo and watch the entire Ed Unicycles the USA series from start to finish over there. Your support is greatly appreciated. Well, this old thing ain't built for speed, but I love my trusty dusty speed. It'll get me around the world soon, then I'll try a fool. I know my route is roundabout, but I sure as hell don't have a doubt It'll get me where I'm going as long as the wind is blowing I'm well aware of dangers out there and it's not that I don't